Only one Asian country has made the World Cup semifinals before, and that was South Korea at the 2002 World Cup. However, this miraculous semifinal run was covered with a lot of controversies on whether it was legitimate or not, and whether there was bribery involved. So today, we're looking at all the controversies surrounding the 2002 World Cup and how South Korea shocked the world at this tournament. The first controversy already took place six years before the tournament even started. This is due to the fact that FIFA awarded Japan and South Korea the World Cup as joint hosts. FIFA initially never wanted to have joint hosts for a World Cup ever, but essentially FIFA were forced to have joint hosts because neither South Korea or Japan could handle a massive tournament like this by themselves. Now a lot of complaints came from this host selection. First, Japan have never qualified for a World Cup before the 2002 tournament, meaning they had no football history and Western football fans didn't like that. It's kind of similar to what Qatar had to go through when they were selected to be hosts. There were also other reasons, like the Europeans having to watch matches in the morning, which disturbed work days for many European people, and also the fact that fans going to the World Cup would have to travel across the seas to go between South Korea and Japan. Additionally, this was the first World Cup to ever be hosted in Asia, and many accused FIFA of selling out to the Asian market and putting political and money priorities before supporter convenience. I mean, what did y'all expect, bro? It's FIFA. Of course they were gonna do that. However, in my opinion, regardless of whatever corruption went on during the host selection, FIFA tapping into the Asian market was a smart play for them in the short and long term. Now, the World Cup was underway, and South Korea surprisingly managed to top their pretty difficult group. They beat Poland 2-0 in the first game and drew to the United States 1-1 in the next game with little to no controversy. However, the last group stage game against Portugal was when things started to heat up. Now, there wasn't too much wrong in this game, but South Korea surprisingly beat a very stacked Portugal team 1-0, which consisted of Luis Figo, Rui Costa, etc. And also in the match, two Portugal players were sent off, which left the Portuguese players furious, because these red cards played a pivotal role in them losing the game, which knocked them out of the World Cup. Now, even though the red card decisions might have been too harsh, it wasn't anything too suspicious. However, the next game was when the controversy really started. The following game was the round 16 clash between the hosts South Korea and Italy. Now, despite Italy finishing second in the group and having a pretty disappointing World Cup so far, they still had a very stacked team which consisted of Francesco Totti, Paolo Maldini, Buffon, Inzaghi, Cannavaro, etc. However, to everybody's surprise, South Korea shocked the world and defeated Italy 2-1 in extra time. And this was due to a late winner from Jean-Juan An in the 117th minute. Although the goal was pretty legitimate, the Italian fans were furious with the defeat and felt like they were cheated out of the World Cup. And to be fair, in this game, there were a ton of controversy controversial decisions, like a bunch of uncalled fouls, an uncalled penalty for South Korea, which they did miss, bloody tackles, like literally the dude was bleeding, dirty plays like elbowing an Italian player without any consequence, calling Tomasi's goal offsides when it was clearly onside and would have won the game for Italy, and even Totti getting sent off for diving in the box when he did actually dive and it was actually a foul. No wonder the Italians felt like they were robbed, they low-key were. And even the Italian clubs felt disrespected by his loss to South Korea, that the striker for South Korea who scored the second goal, Jean Quan An, was playing on loan at Peru. However, after Italy went out, his loan deal was terminated due to Italy's pettiness from the loss. That's pretty savage, not gonna lie. Messed up, but savage. Now, the referee for that South Korea-Italy game was an Ecuadorian referee named Byron Moreno. He was a terrible referee, if we're being honest. In fact, a few months after the World Cup, he was actually suspended for 20 matches and was being investigated by Ecuadorian football authorities after he made a huge timekeeping error in an Ecuadorian league game between Quito and Barcelona SC. Then, in his third game back for suspension, he was suspended again after he sent three players off in a another Ecuadorian league game between Deportivo Quito and Deportivo Cuenca. He retired from refereeing after this, but he still made the news a few years later. That's because in 2010, at the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City, he was arrested for trying to smuggle over 30 pounds of heroin, which he hid in his underwear. So basically, FIFA paid a heroin smuggler to ref a very important round of 16 game at a World Cup. FIFA has got to start doing some background checks on the people they hire for real. Now, after Italy went out to South Korea, the FIFA president, Sepp Blatter, had to come out and speak about the decisions that were made in the game, and he said they were down to human error and nothing else. However, in hindsight, should people have believed Sepp Blatter? Probably not. Now, the quarterfinal game between South Korea versus Spain might have been more controversial than the game against Italy. Real quick though, if you made it this far in the video, please remember to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, back to the quarterfinal game, Spain scored a completely legitimate goal off a free kick, but the Egyptian referee, Gamal al Gundur said that there was some shoving going on and the goal had to be disallowed. Now, was there any shoving going on? I don't think so. That's not it though, because Spain scored another legitimate goal in the second half. However, the goal was called off because the ball supposedly went out of play before it went into the back of the net. But as you can clearly see, the ball did not go out at all. Now, these two disallowed goals for Spain made the match go into penalties. And that's when the Spaniard, Joaquin, got his penalty saved from the South Korean keeper. However, Lin Woon Jae, the goalkeeper for South Korea, was miles off his line, but the referees didn't call it. And South Korea went on to win the quarterfinal and were on to the semis. The footballing world was furious and journalist Paul Hayward spoke out about this game, saying, The records say that Koreans knocked out Spain in a penalty shootout in Guangzhou on Saturday. The records are a lie and this 
tournament has descended into farce. He also said that FIFA's decision to appoint officials from minor footballing nations was anti-meritocratic, which pretty much means that he wanted referees to come from major footballing nations like countries in the Western world. I feel like this comment is a little racist, not gonna lie, just a tiny bit. Now obviously, just like the Italian press, the Spain press were absolutely fuming as well, stating that South Korea had somehow rigged the tournament. Can't blame them though, because Spain were high key robbed in this game. This win didn't mean that South Korea became the first Asian country to qualify for a World Cup semi-final. However, their run would end here because a single goal from Michael Ballack from Germany made sure that South Korea couldn't go on to win the entire tournament. Imagine if South Korea actually beat Germany, bro. There would have been riots everywhere. However, even though South Korea got knocked out and even lost to Turkey in the third place game, the host nation were treated like heroes throughout all of Korea, and even the chairman of the North Korean Football Association, Ri Kwang Gun, sent a public congratulations to North Korea's bitter enemies. Now, even though South Korea didn't go on to win the entire tournament, Italy and Spain were both furious about the way they lost, and they got even more pissed when the FIFA corruption scandal of 2015 came out in full display, and the former FIFA Vice President Jack Warner was charged with corruption, and some of the claims even linked back to some of the officials at the 2002 World Cup, which only strengthened the claims that the tournament was corrupt and FIFA failed to maintain the integrity of the sport. It also didn't help at that time that the FIFA Vice President was a South Korean man named Chung Bong Joon, who was also the head of the South Korean Football Association. Now, there's no confirmation that the guy did anything wrong. Bay, it's just suspicious. That's all I'm saying. However, all the countries that South Korea had to face in the knockout stages went on to win the World Cup. Italy went on to win in 2006 after the robbery from 2002. Spain went on to win their first World Cup in 2010. And also, Germany went on to win their World Cup in 2014. So in the end, no harm was done. Now, it has been 20 plus years since the 2002 World Cup. However, nothing is confirmed on whether the tournament was actually corrupted or not, despite all the allegations and conspiracies. So, what do y'all think? Do you guys actually think that FIFA rigged the game so South Korea can make it far in the tournament? Or was it simply because of human errors from the referees? Let me know in the comments. And also, remember to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And also, check out my other video on the rise of Victor Osiman. You definitely won't regret it. His upbringing is really interesting.